Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca, and today we're going to be talking about the drug bisoprolol, also known as Zibeta or Monocor. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Bisoprolol belongs to the beta blocker drug classification and is most commonly used as an antihypertensive medication, meaning it is used to treat hypertension or high blood pressure. Bisoprolol works by affecting a certain part of the nervous system. The part of the nervous system that is affected by bisoprolol is called the sympathetic nervous system, which is also known as the fight or flight nervous system. Let's quickly review the sympathetic nervous system before we get into bisoprolol specifically. The sympathetic nervous system is primarily responsible for increasing the amount of oxygen and blood flow throughout the body to help in fight or flight situations, like say when you need to fight or run away from a dinosaur. In these situations, your muscles require more oxygen and require a higher blood flow to transport that oxygen. The sympathetic nervous system is even naturally stimulated during regular stress and exercise. Some of the ways that the sympathetic nervous system accomplishes this increase in oxygen and blood flow is by constricting or narrowing blood vessels, which increases blood pressure and blood flow, bronchodilating, which opens the airway, allowing for more oxygen flow, and increasing heart rate, which also increases blood flow. Again, all of these effects occur when the sympathetic or fight or flight nervous system is stimulated. And how these effects are actually achieved is by stimulating different receptors throughout the sympathetic nervous system. Today, we'll just talk about the beta-1 and beta-2 receptors, also called beta-adrenergic receptors. The main effects of the beta-1 receptors is to increase heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiac output, while beta-2 mainly helps in bronchodilation. I always like to think one heart and two lungs, to remember that beta-1 deals with the heart and blood pressure, and beta-2 deals with the lungs. So finally, how does bisoprolol work with these beta receptors to affect blood pressure? Well, bisoprolol blocks or inhibits the beta-1 receptors. And if we block a receptor, we effectively get the opposite of what it normally does. So by blocking beta-1 receptors, bisoprolol decreases heart rate, decreases blood pressure by vasodilating, and decreases cardiac output. This is why bisoprolol is called a beta blocker. It is important to note that bisoprolol does not block or inhibit beta-2 receptors. This means that bisoprolol is a selective beta-1 blocker. Selective beta-1 blockers are also called cardioselective beta blockers, again, because they only affect the heart and blood pressure without affecting the lungs. So again, just to sum up, bisoprolol inhibits beta-1 receptors of the sympathetic nervous system, primarily decreasing heart rate and decreasing blood pressure. Like we mentioned, bisoprolol is used as an antihypertensive for the management of high blood pressure by causing the blood vessels to dilate. The more dilated the blood vessels are, the lower the blood pressure. In many cases, a high blood pressure leads to heart failure, so you may see that bisoprolol is used off-label for the treatment of heart failure. The effects of bisoprolol also lead to a decreased workload of the heart, meaning the heart doesn't use as much oxygen or energy when taking bisoprolol. This can be very beneficial when dealing with angina. So again, off-label, bisoprolol can be used to treat angina. Finally, by reducing heart rate, bisoprolol can be used off-label in the treatment of atrial fibrillation, or AFib. A lot of the side effects of bisoprolol relate to how the drug works. Bisoprolol may cause bradycardia, which is an abnormally low heart rate, hypotension, which is an abnormally low blood pressure, dysrhythmias, and more. Hypotension may manifest as dizziness, fatigue, weakness, and more. During overdose, bisoprolol can block or antagonize beta-2 receptors and can cause bronchospasms, which may present as wheezing, coughing, and chest pain. Other side effects of bisoprolol include weight gain or edema, decreased libido and erectile dysfunction, headaches, and many more. Bisoprolol should not be used in patients with cardiogenic shock or hypotension due to the risk of significantly lowering blood pressure. Due to bisoprolol's effects of decreasing heart rate, it should also be avoided in patients with bradycardia, certain cardiac arrhythmias like heart block, which also results in a slowed heart rate, and more. As with many drugs, use cautiously in elderly patients and those with hepatic and renal impairment due to their decreased ability to eliminate drugs. These patients may require lower doses of bisoprolol. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of bisoprolol. Monitor heart rate and blood pressure just before administration. Typically, ensure heart rate is more than 60 beats per minute and systolic blood pressure is more than 90. Otherwise, hold the medication and notify the provider. Also, when first starting bisoprolol, regular heart rate and blood pressure checks should be performed throughout the day for the first few days. Monitoring intake and outputs may be beneficial, especially in patients with heart failure. 
especially for elderly patients, instruct patients to avoid rapid changes in position, such as quickly changing from sitting to standing, to reduce the risk of orthostatic hypotension and falls. Ensure that diabetic patients are aware that beta blockers like bisoprolol may mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia. Lastly, as with most all antihypertensive medications, it is important not to discontinue bisoprolol abruptly, but to instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions to reduce the risk of a hypertensive crisis. And that's about it for the basics of bisoprolol. If you have any questions or would like me to cover a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.